money on. It's in the four components of your lifestyle and what you're doing. And those four components we're going to break down today. Uh, the four components are physical fitness. We all need that. And we, we know that. It's kind of one of those things. It's like, oh, I have to go do that. And if it's not something that we're doing regularly as a ritual, um, then we lose sight of it. We're going to talk about in a lot of books and publications where you've heard, you know, just making sure you get your physical activity two times a week. And two times a week is not enough. If you just want to work two times a week, like I just had two days off, and today's my first day back. And always coming back to work after two days off, it's really hard to get yeah. back into the groove. Today I'm really feeling it. It's like I have 40 emails and I have stuff piled up in an inbox and I just don't feel like I can really get into it. Same way you feel about exercise when, when you've taken three or four days off. You're like, oh my God, what does this feel like? It has to be every day that you're doing physical fitness. So that's our first component. Our second component is nutrition. So these are the cornerstones, you know, making sure that we get our heart rate up, that we're doing something physically active, but then we're looking at what we eat. And we're going to delve into a lot of different little basics on that, not coming from a nutritionist standpoint, because that's not my background, but just look, looking at the basics of what we already know, but what sometimes we need to be reminded of. Therapeutic treatments is another component, and that means getting in for some type of therapy. And the therapy can be your bathtub at home. It doesn't need to be a spa treatment. Um, the art of the bath is one of the things that I think has been long lost. If you even look at how they're constructing homes nowadays, homes are many times constructed with showers versus a bathtub. Your bathtub can be the best friend you have. And we're going to talk a little bit about what to put in the bath and how to, how to have your bath time, you know, where you tell your family, I'm shutting the door right. and I'm going to take some time for, for a bath. It was very interesting. I have I had a client who they uh, purchased a new home and um, she's in the bathroom and her husband says, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm measuring the tub. And he goes, what are you measuring the tub for? And she goes, look, she said, if it's 72 inches, and she says, I'm short. She says, I go under. Yeah. And she says, I love my bath. I want it to be the size that I want it to be because that's who it's for. Yeah. And so very interesting that you said that yeah. because she's obviously one that really enjoys yeah. you know, doing that well, ritual at home. And we're going to talk about other cultures because we need to understand where spa came from. But um, I mean, in Japan, that's all there is, is bath. Um, I mean, my, um, my ex-mother-in-law is full Japanese mm. and you would not not have an evening where you don't take a bath and she's raised my children taking baths. Really? So nowadays, you know, we don't necessarily do that as much and prevalently as other cultures do it. And that's really where the word spa came from. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. I have a client whose only escape is the bath. She has autistic children. Yeah. She actually is talking about something. She literally sits so into her. the bath in order to hide from the yeah. world for a little bit. That's great. So it's the opposite. Hers doesn't want to sing. She yeah. absolutely needs to sing. Ah, so that's so funny. funny. <laughs> and you know, you look at our spa here. Um, we have a thirty thousand dollar hydrotherapy tub up in one room that comes from Europe, and it is all computerized with jets and programs. You can put a sports program into the computer, and it does different jet circulations than a lymphatic drainage program, where you want to get the lymph moving throughout the body and your lymph is this very superficial, circulatory uh, you know, part of your body that's different than moving blood. Lymph is really everything that carries out all the toxins in our body. So there's one program just for that on the tub. The tub is probably the least utilized thing in our entire spa, you know, because of our American culture is, oh, what is, oh a bath, what's a bath going to do for me? But if we went to a European spa, your doctor would probably prescribe a bath. So it's just so different in the way that we look at spa. The last component is psychological well-being. So we get that from other components, like for example, therapeutic treatments might give you psychological well-being, but we want to look at that a little bit deeper and we'll del delve into that. And that's just looking at some things in your life that can create that um, that real ability for you to have equanimity, I call it. And it being equanimous means mm -hmm. that we're not spending our entire day looking at pulling things closer to us or pushing them away. 
Those are the two dualities of the mind, right? That's all we do all day if you think about it. All we're doing all day is thinking, I want more of that, I want more of that. Or we're thinking, I don't want that, I don't want that. But when, when, when we can be in, in the middle and we can just be like, you know what? I had a very equanimous day yesterday. It was just about being. And I feel like probably I didn't have anything on my schedule that I had to do for anyone. And it just felt equanimous. And that's very rare that we feel that way. How many of us in, in today's society are feeling like between a bill we have to pay or a stressor that comes into our lives? Most of the time right now in society, we're pushing things away that we don't want. So equanimous is the word equal and then A and I and uh -huh. uh, equanimous is E Q U and A N I M O U S. Equanimous. Mm -hmm. I like that word. You? Equanimous. I have a, a wow. necklace that I wear, and um, it's the um, love, joy, compassion, and equanimity. And it's the four major kind of aspects in a Buddhist or you know philosophy of kind of what you want to. So it, it allows me to remember that, and I, I love the word equanimous. Uh, probably 15 years ago, I went to a, this is getting off, but we can get off. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. Yeah. I went to a, um, uh, a meditation retreat, a silent meditation retreat. It was 10 days where you could not talk. And it was up in Northern California, and it was, it's called Vipassana. You can take and look up Vipassana, and they're all over the world. Actually, the belief of this meditation retreat is that it's by a gentleman, uh, an Indian gentleman called Esen Gwenka, and his belief is that there is no charge for the 10 days um, that he associates with his retreat. Basically, you pay whatever it is that you're able to pay.